Hello, my name is Bob West, and uh, joining with me in the background is uh, my lab, the data science lab. <clears throat> of course, the lab is not convening physically at this point, um, which is why I will now switch to a, a more neutral background. And um, let me also start my slides, and then I will have to do a screen share. Okay. Okay. I will start you off with a few buzzwords, kind of maximum information gains, just so you know who you're dealing with. Um, what do we do in the data science lab? We do machine learning, mostly on the applied side, data mining, social and information network analysis, computational social science, natural language processing, human computation, crowdsourcing and uh, information retrieval. So now, in the few minutes to come, I will put a bit more substance around these buzzwords and um, explain with a few concrete examples um, the kinds of projects that we work on. Before that, though, I would like to give you uh, my view of, of data science. So data science is itself a buzzword. Um, everyone talks about it. No one really knows what it is. So this is Bob West's view of data science. What we do in my lab, and I'll go uh, clockwise in the circle, the general theme in my lab is we distill raw data into meaningful insights, insights into people and into the world. To do that, we leverage large data sets. The little butterfly that you see there on the screen uh, symbolizes the warm, fuzzy feeling that I get in my belly when I have a nice, juicy data set at my hands. Often, um, uh, this uh, analyzing these data sets requires drawing meaningful conclusions from what I call found data. So this is not experimentally collected data like a physicist or a chemist would do in the lab under very controlled conditions, but found data is data that is collected um, from the world that is taking its natural uh, course. So we have, we're dealing here mostly with observational studies rather than experimental studies. Um, sometimes, uh, we don't have the data yet that we would like to analyze. So an important component of our work is also uh, to generate our own data. For example, using techniques such as human computation, crowdsourcing games with a purpose and so on. Um, ultimately, we want to address real world issues and um, give back to the world by building real applications. So if, if there's this application component in our project projects, that's really something that um, that we like to have. And ultimately, we are a lab in the computer science department, um, so we do also like to develop neat algorithms. Okay, so this was still rather abstract, so in the next, uh, in the next minutes, I will sample a few of these um, aspects and I will give you concrete projects uh, to, to show you what we're working on. Uh, the first example project um, highlights uh, the algorithms that we uh, that we like to build. And um, <clears throat> this project is about cross-lingual document representations. So as a motivation, the world is multilingual. The web is multilingual. Uh, imagine you uh, are on a web search engine and you want to learn about uh, Swiss health insurance. And by the way, this is a search query that I guarantee every one of you will type at some point should you choose to come to EPFL. Um, so, if you uh, are an English speaker and you type the search query, then the search engine has a huge corpus of text that it can leverage for giving you the answer. About half of the web is in English, so among this half of the web, there's probably a lot of useful information about Swiss health insurance. But now imagine that you don't speak English, but you only speak this weird language. So, let's make this a bit interactive. Who knows which language this is? The flag is um is shown there so let me uh, someone is saying mordor no 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 this is not mordor this is um this is wales uh, so this is welsh imagine that someone only speaks welsh and they type this welsh search query to learn about swift swiss health insurance now the web is only um less than much less than a percent uh welsh so there will be much less information to source the answer from for that person wouldn't it be amazing 
if you could type a search query in any language and get search results in any other language. So this is kind of the motivation for this project. Um, and uh, our solution for this is uh, a method that we call CR5. The input here is text in any language and the output is a language independent document representation. Um, so um, the mapping that we construct is from a bag of words into a vector space where all the languages cohabitate basically. All the languages live in the same vector space so they become comparable geometrically. And if you're less of a geometric but more of a theological thinker, then you can uh, think of this as some sort of Pentecostal experience where all these people that speak different languages all of a sudden understand each other because the Holy Ghost went into them. Under the hood, of course, it's not the Holy Ghost at work here, but a lot of linear algebra. I won't go there, uh, but I'd rather show you just this link in case you're interested in learning more. Um, next, uh, we'll, I want to highlight a project. I want to highlight a project that, um, uh, that, that, that shows uh, the real world application aspect of our work. We will stay for now in this realm of multilinguality, but now we're not talking about uh, teaching computers to deal with different languages, but teaching humans to deal and speak uh, different languages. Uh, so here we're interested in building a, an application, a tool that uh, that, that can help you learn foreign languages. So there are, of course, uh, many such tools out there already. For example, um, for example, Duolingo and so on. But the crux with these tools is that always you need to have a lot of discipline. You need to sit down, turn on Duolingo, and actually do your lessons. Our, the approach that we explored here is a bit different. Um, so we built this tool where you read the web, you just go about your everyday information, reading uh, activities, you um, read news, you read Wikipedia, whatever, social media, and our browser plugin will sometimes just swap a word from uh, the language that you're actually reading in into a, another target language that you want to learn. So here, for example, I'm reading some, some uh, English Wikipedia text, and you see that in green, there are some words marked here that are uh, in a different language. What language is that? No, it's not uh, the language of Mordor. No, this is also not Welsh. This is Finnish. Um, so the software has swapped out uh, English words into Finnish. And so I'm reading this. And uh, naturally, by doing this over a long time, I will understand these words from context. And this way, I will, um, at some point, also be able to memorize them. Uh, for example, the Muslim, U Taysen, uh, is centered on soul, it's quite easy to understand that this means the Muslim community is centered around soul. So in the long run, you will learn these words. That's the idea here. Now we call this approach broccoli because like, like parents are mixing healthy broccoli in uh, their kids' food, so they stay healthy. We are mixing some healthy vocabulary learning in people's uh, everyday informa information diets. If you want to learn more, uh, here's a link where you can learn about broccoli. Okay, so I have just a few minutes. So um, why don't I, why don't I um, skip this third uh, third project? I just speak very fast. Okay, and then we now finish this off with a third, ex a fourth example project, um, which highlights how we sometimes use creative methods in our lab to uh, collect new data sets that we don't have yet. Um, and the, this is in the realm of um, computational humor, which is maybe a bit of a dangerous topic for a German. I'm from Germany. Uh, Germans and humor, maybe a bit of a toxic combination, but uh, we tried it anyways. Um, so the... Um, the starting point here was that I'm a big fan of The Onion, which is an American satirical um, newspaper. And every time I'm reading The Onion, which I do nearly every day, uh, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could create such funny headlines automatically, or at least uh, recognize them automatically? And the first striking observation regarding these satirical headlines, you see one here on the slide, uh, is that they're really, really similar to real news headlines. 
So the idea came up to treat the task of creating these funny headlines like a machine translation task. But instead of translating, say, from English to French, the task would be to translate from serious to funny. Uh, machine translation works by using large corpora of aligned bilingual texts. So it would be great if we could also have such an aligned corpus, uh, not of English and French text, but of serious and very similar but funny uh, text. And so to create such an aligned corpus, the first idea was um, to, to uh, give serious headlines to humans and ask them to turn these uh, serious headlines into something satirical. Unfortunately, this is extremely hard. You need some real talent for doing this and you definitely need another passport than I have it. Um, so then, uh, but then uh, we realized that it turns out that the opposite is much easier. Taking a headline that's already funny and making it serious by destroying the humor that's in the headline, that's much easier. And you know, for destroying things, I definitely have the right passport. So uh, this gave rise to this game on fun Dot me. You can play this online if you're interested. Um, and the goal here um, is as a player, you're given a headline from the onion and you are asked to make a minimal change uh, to, the, to that satirical headline in order to remove the humor and make other players believe that this headline could be from a real newspaper. So in this example, Margaret Thatcher, Thatcher's ashes scattered over free market. I could just change free market for Atlantic Ocean, and then the result, Margaret Thatcher's ashes scattered over Atlantic Ocean, sounds quite serious. Okay, so um, we have uh, this way collected a fairly large corpus of tens of thousands of these uh, aligned uh, headlines, and we've gained some very, very interesting uh, insights into the structure of satirical news, which uh, weren't obvious before. And the next step, obviously, is to move to automatically generating these satirical headlines from scratch. Uh, we're not there yet. This is future work for um, 2032. Okay, so um, with that, I'm already over time. Thanks for, for listening. Here's a, a picture of Switzerland. It looks like that everywhere, everywhere you go. It's this beautiful, always, every single day of the year. So do come to EPFL. Thank you. If you have any questions, if you'd like to learn more, please go to DLab at uh, dlab.epfl.ch goodbye and actually also uh, goodbye from this very special new member of our lab